uh, for being here today. Quid pro quo. I had to look it up. Uh, it's Latin for something for something. A favor granted in return for something. In 2016, the Clinton Foundation received a $28 million donation from Morocco's King Mohammed. And shortly thereafter, Secretary of State Clinton relaxed, relaxed U.S. foreign aid restrictions on Morocco. Mr. Fitton, was that a quid pro quo? Was that just a coincidence? Uh, that's, that's the matter that needs to be investigated. Uh, the foundation, the Clinton Foundation, and its associated, uh, the Global Initiative, was able to raise tons of money uh, during Mrs. Clinton's tenure as Secretary of State. And um, some of that was purely charitable, there's no doubt. It was purely charitable activities the foundation engaged in, as Congressman Maloney hi highlighted. Uh, but when you have these foreign governments making massive donations to the foundation and major corporations making massive foundations to the foundation, many sometimes of which were out of line with other charitable activities, I think it's a fair question to ask what were they expecting in return and was it a charitable enterprise or were they just buying insurance? Now that may, or just making sure that they're, they're, uh, they would get a better hearing uh, at, at, uh, over certain policies. But does it mean anything happened illegally? I don't know, but no one's asking the question. Laureate University, $17.6 to President Clinton, while Hillary, was, Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, to be the honorary chancellor. I did not know that paid so well. Mm -hmm. we the, asked the founder at that university has another organization called International Youth Foundation that received $40 million in grants while Secretary Clinton was in, in office. After she left office, the grants went from $40 million to a little over $3 million. Is that a coincidence, you think, Mr. Fenton? I don't know. You have, to ask, you have to ask the question. And this is why Mrs. Clinton promised these disclosures, and which makes it so problematic that certain these disclosures weren't followed as they were supposed to have been. A Ukrainian... We asked the State Department Give us the agreement. What did Mr. Clinton do, agree to do in exchange for that uh, enormous amount of money? Uh, but that portion was blocked out by the State Department. A Ukrainian oil and steel magnate, Mr. Uh, Pinchuk, donated between 10 to 25 million to the Clinton Foundation. In return, he was offered priority access to the State Department. Mr. Fenton, would you say it's quid pro quo? Uh, it certainly seems that way. And then lastly, and I know your organization has uh, done some work on this, Mr. Fenton, the Uranium, uranium One deal. Uh, th those interests involved in that deal contributed more than $140 million to the Clinton Foundation. Mr. Fenton, could you uh, fill this, uh, uh, this organization in on what happened in return for that $140 million in contributions? Well, the State Department, in addition to other agencies, approved... Uh, the goal of those entities, which was to uh, get this stake in Uranium One. And uh, again, the FBI was looking into it, and the allegation is the FBI investigation uh, was curtailed and uh, silenced, or at least aspects of it were silenced from public disclosure to protect uh, the Clintons and the Obama administration generally from uh, controversy on this, and again, another area for uh, investigation. In your opinion, how, how, do, how would that happen? How would it be silenced? How would it be curtailed? How could that happen? You don't pursue certain leads. Uh, you undercharge, in the case of Uranium One, I think the allegations were that some folks were being charged and a lot of issues were being left out of the documents or the charging documents or the cases that would have embarrassed them. Uh, so, uh, whether that, all that is true or not, I don't know, because the Justice Department is giving us the documents. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, and I have 33 seconds left, let the record reflect. In Iowa, we have a saying, if it looks like a pig, if it sounds like a pig, and if it smells like a pig, it's probably a pig. And I think, based on what I read today, something smells here. I yield back my time. I, I thank the gentleman from Iowa. The uh, chair recognizes the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Ms. Eleanor Holmes.